Throughout the duration of Camel Trophy's history, the full range of Land Rover vehicles have been challenged. From the Range Rovers and Series 3s of the early 1980s, to the Defender 90s and 110s of 88 and 89. The 1990s saw the introduction of the Discovery TDI 3-door, and later the 5-door model. Finally, in 1998, the new Freelander was used in Land Rover's final Camel Trophy year. The Land Rover Camel Trophy Partnership was a highly successful combination of great adventure and dramatic four-wheel driving. Loosely referred to as the Olympics of four-wheel driving, the first trophy, held in 1981, was a trip on the Trans-Amazonian Highway. It was undertaken by a group of Germans in Jeep CJ6s. Despite not finishing the trek, it captured the imagination of adventurers across the world. This program follows the last 10 years of Land Rover's involvement in Camel Trophy. The Land Rover, in its many guises of Defender, Discovery, and finally the Freelander, adventured its way around the world, covering over 20,000 kilometers from the heat of the Amazon to the dense jungles of Malaysia and the freezing temperatures of Mongolia and Siberia. However, by 1998, the focus had drifted away from the vehicles and towards special tasks, such as kayaking, orienteering, and mountain biking. This was to be a turning point for Land Rover. And despite the success of Tierra del Fuego and the introduction of the Freelander to the event, they decided to sever their ties with Camel Trophy and make it their last event. is where our story begins, with 14 nations taking part in Camel Trophy Amazon. The competitors expected plenty of mud, water and serious off-road driving, and that's exactly what they got as they put their Land Rover Defender 110s through their paces as they began the 1,500-kilometer journey. The Jewel in the Jungle the Camel Trophy's 10th anniversary lures teams from 14 nations to the Amazon Basin to struggle 1,300 miles through an event that celebrates man's sense of adventure. The competitors, all amateurs, have a once-in-a-lifetime chance to discover their limitations in what is a cross between international sport and a multinational expedition. Camel Trophy is getting more popular every year, and this year is no exception. Back in 1980, when the first Camel Trophy was run, there were 1,600 applicants or thereabouts. This year we've had over a million applicants worldwide, and uh, when you consider that those million are actually after 28 seats, 28 places on the convoy, you can see that we can be fairly selective as to who we actually take to represent the countries. The route, covering jungle swamp and the badlands of the Brazilian gold rush, offers no refuge for the faint-hearted. The winners of the trophy emerge from 10 special tasks designed to test teamwork, driving skills and endurance. The first day and three special tasks a time to control pent-up nervous energy. Go. 
Amazonian Route 163 welcomes careful drivers. A single mistake here means a 50-foot drop to the floor of a washed-out road. It's hot and airless in the cab. You're cramped and caked in sour-smelling red mud. Then, the first major obstacle and the first murmurs of discontent. You know, it's better you, you just push here, you know, maybe then push. Look at this, this trick here. You get maybe you should try, try with yeah. the... The real lesson, that it is one for all and all for one, sinks in later. The convoy presses on, sustained by dried biscuits, rice and hope. Men are numb with tiredness. They have an average of four hours sleep a night on which to cope with life's little problems. I think it's not just the physical sort of strain, it's the mental strain as well. Keep your concentration up. We're driving along roads like this for six, seven hours in darkness. It's really hard to pick out the potholes, but you, you've just got to keep your mind on it all the time. And that drains you as much as anything, I think. We thought it would be uh, a bit like this, not that muddy, but uh, we were prepared for a lot of hard work. Mud, mud, inglorious mud. It waits to trap the unwise or the unwary. How many cars are sitting in the mud? Over. We're coming up on this thick, nasty bog up here, and there's about three or four cars stuck on the right-hand side. They put the wrong line. What you have to do is go to the left and really put the welly to it. You get up on two wheels, but don't worry about it. You won't go over. Me. He's stuck again. Jesus Christ, what is the f***ing matter with him? We told you to go to the right, and you went to the left, then you got excited and went to the right again. You get stuck every time, over. One thing about Will, you can always tell when he's the right side up because it's the shiny path that's at the top. <laughs> Would you believe we've passed a car wash? Well, it's a Brazilian car wash, but nonetheless, it's a car wash. The Amazonian port of Santarém, a town everyone feared would be one broken bridge too far, is within reach. A sudden sense of exhilaration, a secret sense of excitement. The bonds of friendship are strengthened by common problems, as much as shared pleasures. Yet even in an event which offers a special prize for sportsmanship, Man is a competitive animal. Thoughts begin to stray to the resumption of the special tasks. But it's up to the Turks to defend the trophy. Last year, Galip and Ali win the Campbell Trophy. And that puts lots of pressure on us. Problems are relative. 
the Spanish team, who had rebuilt their vehicle overnight following a road accident, defy logic and share the lead after five tasks. Humidity have been beaten, but mud must have the final say. Sport, like life, is not fair. Spain's chance of winning goes with this tire. You can't measure a sense of personal satisfaction on a points table. Siberia played host to the 1990 event, a first for Russia and also a first for the Land Rover Discovery TDI three-door vehicle. The route would take the competitors 1,500 kilometers from Bratsk to Irkutsk. The opening ceremony was held in Moscow giving the competitors a chance to take in some of Russia's famous landmarks. We first started planning this event about 18 months ago. And from the first word, we have received help and support from the authorities, providing invaluable assistance towards this, the first major international motorsport event to be held within the Soviet Union. The competitors put Moscow behind them and concentrated on the set of special tasks designed to put the new vehicles through their paces. Little bit to the right. Yeah, back really still not on three. Okay, back. Four, three, two, one, go. Night driving became de rigueur for the teams, and the Japanese took it all in their stride, carefully following the map as they drove through sleepy Siberian villages. on the agenda is getting across this uh, stretch of water but I see in the in the river behind us there's a log raft just approaching and that moves at an incredibly slow pace so we might be delayed just a wee bit. The locally hired raft carried the teams and their discoveries downstream as they continued heading south towards their final destination. Okay. 